Some RGB monitors have their input connectors permanently affixed to the back control panel, while other models require expensive and sometimes rare expansion boards in order to use it. Some awesome members of the retro gaming scene have been hard at work trying to make their own homebrew replacement cards. There's already one available for JVC and Panasonic monitors, but most Sony monitor input cards are complex designs, which include proprietary software. Up until recently, it was thought that making a homebrew card for Sony monitors was impossible, but one developer has been working on a solution to replace one model, the BKM129X. The BKM129X is one of the most basic Sony input cards, and it's used with the D9H, D14H, and 20L5 monitors. The 129X is often hard to find and can be expensive, so while the monitors it's compatible with aren't the most common, a homebrew replacement card is certainly welcomed. The replacement card is a much simpler design and uses an Arduino Nano to emulate the software of the original. Its inputs are in the same order as the original, but it doesn't offer BNC outputs, which is both good since you'll no longer be required to have 75 ohm terminators on the output, but bad if you were looking to daisy chain some monitors together. The developer is also planning on adding a direct SCART input design, as well as one with both BNC input and output connectors. To install the card, simply unplug the power from your monitor and remove any existing cards, at least at first just to test this replacement card. You can put them back in later. Then plug in the replacement. Please note that this beta design uses a custom 3D printed case to hold it in place. The case is also a beta, and the one here doesn't line up flush with the monitor, but the final versions will. Also, there's some online services that can make metal versions out of most 3D printed plastic designs, and while this one worked perfect for me, if you're looking for a metal version, I think that'll be available as well. After it's inserted, just connect your cables in the same order as the original card. From the bottom up, it's sync, red, blue, and green. Then, just power it on and start playing. Please keep in mind that you'll need to set up the card using the menus the same way you would with all BVMs by assigning the card and its external sync pin to a channel number and then setting that to either RGB or component video. Video quality is about the same as the original, which on this monitor is pretty poor. That's just a result of my specific monitor though and not the replacement card. My D9H has always given me trouble. And speaking of trouble, the new card doesn't fix any of the weird issues the monitor has with the originals. And if you're using a D9H, you'll need to play around with the left three buttons on the front to get it working, exactly like with the original cards. D9H owners already know exactly what I'm talking about. It can be a total pain. Compatibility is the same as the original card, at least with this revision. So that means consoles like Genesis and SNES will work perfect, but SMS and possibly others will have a weird sync issue, exactly like the original 129X. Now, there's a few separate projects in place looking to fix this, but the important thing to remember right now is that you're not losing any compatibility, it's the exact same as the 129X card. Now, even though this might seem silly, I wanted to do lag tests on this card as well, just to be sure. As expected, the time sleuth through an HDMI to VGA converter into a sync combiner shows zero milliseconds of lag on the top, just about eight milliseconds in the middle, and a CRT takes 16 milliseconds to complete the frame, so what you see here is exactly what you'd see in all CRTs. That means the replacement card is a zero lag added solution, including in other resolutions. Next, I wanted to test the component video compatibility of the card, so I added some RCA to BNC connectors to the inputs and tested a Wii. The original 129X card, as well as the monitors it's compatible with, should be compatible with 240p, 480i, 480p, 720p, and 1080i, so I wanted to test all of these. My footage of the Wii came out pretty bad, sorry that was my camera settings, but you can see it's compatible with both 31kHz 480p and 15kHz 480i, just like with the RGB modes. To test the other resolutions, I once again used a time sleuth, this time through an HDMI to component converter. You can see as I cycle through all the resolutions that it's compatible with every one and all are zero milliseconds of lag. And that actually includes the converters as well. Both converters I used show zero added lag as well. 
So as you can see, the 129X homebrew replacement performs exactly like the original, with pretty much no shortcomings. This is an open source project, and the developer Martin has more information available, as well as the design listed on his website. He doesn't have any plans to sell them himself, however there's a few people working on a small run of production for anyone interested. At the moment, there's no official price announced, but I'm sure it's going to end up being under $100. Also, I'm sure all BVM owners who are watching this are all probably thinking the same thing right now. What about versions of this card for more common models of BVMs, and especially ones that have rare and expensive input cards like the elusive BKM68X? Those other cards are much more complicated, and at the moment there's no plans to start work on replacements for those. This is an open source project though, so anyone with the skills might want to take a look and see if they could help. Well, that's it for this time. If you like what you saw here, please consider signing up for any of the support services such as Patreon or Floatplane, because your support is what allows things like this video and the research and development that went into it to happen. Also, if you want to be kept in the loop of everything going on in the retro gaming scene, please check out the weekly podcast available on Wednesdays as a video or on every audio podcast platform. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.